In this video, a guy wakes up in the middle of the night after hearing something coming from above his ceiling. Realizing he is on the top floor and the only thing above him is the attic, he grabs his flashlight and heads up there to check it out. At first he doesn't see anything and figures it might just be a mouse making the noise, so he heads back downstairs, but then he suddenly hears a loud crash that startles him. Knowing he has to find out what caused it, he goes back up to the attic and what he sees up there is terrifying. Then there's this next video of a man who starts recording after hearing scratches and knocks on his window. At first he ignores it, but eventually the noise gets louder so he decides to film it. He opens the blinds to check, but there's nothing there. He tries to go back to sleep, but the knocking starts again, and when he looks this time, he sees a man waving at him right outside his window. While a family was enjoying their stay in an apartment, something terrifying happened, and it was all caught on camera. The dad was watching football, the mom was doing chores, and their young son was filming everything on his phone. As the boy turned the camera towards himself, he suddenly saw something horrifying, a creepy figure standing behind him, staring straight at the camera. He panicked and quickly called for help, and soon, security officers were called to check it out. In this story, a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Jazz, rented an apartment to celebrate their wedding anniversary. While exploring the place, they noticed something odd on top of the wardrobe. It turned out to be a hidden recording device. Even worse, the camera was pointed right at their bed. Mrs. Jazz, already feeling uncomfortable, climbed on a chair to get a closer look. Sure enough, the camera's red light and microphone were both on, meaning it was recording them. The couple immediately left the apartment, feeling completely freaked out. In another video, a woman kept experiencing strange and creepy events in the house she was staying in. In one clip, a mysterious hand ran through her hair while she was sitting alone in the living room. In a second clip, a dark, shadowy figure peeked out from behind the curtains but disappeared as soon as she pulled them open. Terrified, she grabbed her phone and tried to leave the house. But as she did, more strange things happened. 
doors locked by themselves, and the house went dark, leaving her screaming for help. Now this is the story of Jerry Cop, and what happened to him on Airbnb was truly extraordinary. <laughs> he usually rents out his beach house in South Carolina on Airbnb whenever he is not staying there. It's a simple three-bedroom, one-bathroom house. He keeps two bedrooms available for guests, but the master bedroom is locked because he leaves his personal stuff there. It's mostly clothes, nothing valuable, but he locks it up with a regular lock and a deadbolt. He figured no one would ever get in unless they really tried. One time in early spring, he decided to drive down to his South Carolina house from Massachusetts. It's a long 16-hour drive, and he planned to stay there for a week. He usually hires a cleaning lady to tidy up after guests, but since he was going right after the last renter left, he decided to save the money and clean it himself. The last renter was a guy named Ramon. He mentioned in his messages that he was staying with his fiancée and asked for restaurant recommendations, which made him seem trustworthy. Now, Jacob prefers renting to couples because large groups of guys often come to party and can damage the place. So Jacob started his drive early in the morning, and after a long, exhausting trip, he arrived at the house around 10 p.m. He was too tired to check for any mess or anything. He just went straight to his bedroom, unlocked the door, and collapsed into bed. He was so wiped out from driving that he didn't even bother brushing his teeth. After just an hour of sleep, he woke up suddenly around 11.30 p.m. He wasn't sure why, but something felt off. So he turned on his bedside lamp and checked his phone, then decided to walk around the house. Nothing seemed out of place. Everything was neat, and he didn't see any signs that anyone had been there. One of the guest beds looked like it had been slept in, but the rest of the house was spotless. He has a camera on the front porch that records any movement, so out of curiosity, he checked the footage. The camera showed a man entering the house three days before, just Ramon, with no sign of a fiancé. That was strange. Even weirder, there was no footage of him leaving. It creeped him out, so he messaged him through Airbnb to ask if he had checked out, okay, even though it was late. Then he got paranoid and started checking under the beds and in the closets, looking for any signs that someone might still be there. Every closet was empty. But as he sat down in one of the guest rooms, he suddenly heard his master bedroom door quietly click shut. It didn't feel like it was just a breeze. It felt like someone had gently closed it. He went to the door and called out, Ramon, are you still here? His voice was shaky, and he got down on the floor to peek under the door. To his horror, he saw two feet standing just a few feet away on the other side. Panic hit him, so he ran to the kitchen to grab a knife, but the biggest one was already gone. At that point, he knew he had to get out, so he left the house and called 911. When the police arrived, they went inside, and there was Ramon, sitting in the living room acting innocent. He claimed he just needed one more night to stay, which was clearly a lie. He also denied taking the knife, but it was back in the knife holder, conveniently placed there before the police arrived. After 30 minutes of talking, the police let him go, saying I should just deal with it through Airbnb. Well, Jacob was shocked because the police didn't take him seriously. After everyone left, he changed the lock code and reported the incident to Airbnb. They banned him from the platform but he didn't get any money for the extra night he squatted in his house. He didn't feel like real justice, especially since he believed he might have been waiting to harm him. Back in the summer of 2016, Sarah LeCarte and her boyfriend C took a trip to Vermont. She had booked an Airbnb listing as an off-grid cabin, which seemed perfect, tons of great reviews, and a solid five-star rating. The cabin was old, with just one room, a potbelly stove, and a small loft. There was no electricity, and it was really isolated, down a dirt road with the nearest house about half a mile away. The host wasn't home, so they had the place to themselves. They got there around 4 p.m., had a nice dinner, and played some board games by candlelight. By 10 p.m., they were pretty wiped out from hiking all day, so she went up to the loft to sleep while C stayed outside to smoke. About 20 minutes later, as she was dozing off, she was jolted awake by a loud bang on the side of the cabin. Before she could say anything, C yelled up, asking if it was her. Still groggy, she said no, and asked if it was him. He said no, but he didn't seem too worried since he was sitting right outside and hadn't seen anyone. They figured it was just a tree branch falling against the cabin and tried to brush it off. 
But then it happened again, another loud bang, this time from a different side of the cabin. She jumped out of bed and climbed down from the loft just as C was coming inside. He told her to grab anything sharp, head back up to the loft, and stay quiet. She could tell he was trying to stay calm, but he was clearly spooked. He admitted he didn't see anything but thought he might have heard footsteps. While they were whispering about what to do, they heard a slow, scraping sound along the wall of the cabin. Then silence. At that point, she was pretty scared, and they didn't know whether it was a person or an animal. Their car was parked a hundred feet away in the dark, and she was worried that if it was someone messing with them, he might have done something to their car to trap them. C told her to go back up to the loft while he stayed downstairs with a hunting knife and a big stick. She had a couple of steak knives, but not much else for protection. The cabin had huge windows with just screens, so it felt like whoever was outside could see them, but they couldn't see them. After a while, C came up to the loft and pulled up the ladder. He didn't like the idea of someone being able to see him, but not the other way around. They sat there, frozen, listening as the noises continued. There was more banging, scraping, and footsteps. It was way too methodical to be an animal. They kept hearing the crunch of footsteps circling the cabin. At one point, it even sounded like someone was trying to climb the pipe attached to the stove. This went on for hours. They just laid there, terrified, waiting for the worst. She kept thinking the door would burst open any second or the window screens would rip. It felt like they were sitting ducks, just waiting to be attacked. Around 5 a.m., when they started hearing roosters in the distance and the first light of dawn began to creep in, the sounds finally stopped. They barely slept, but when it was light enough, they packed up as fast as they could and got out of there. The car was fine and they didn't see any signs of damage or footprints around the cabin. When she told the Airbnb host about their night, she brushed it off, saying it was probably a porcupine. But to this day, they still believe it was someone else trying to scare them. In July 2019, Sola Solo Sol and her three best friends planned a vacation to Barcelona. They were all 18 and had just finished their first year of college, super excited for their first big trip together. They had been talking about it for months, dreaming of exploring the city, visiting famous sites, and enjoying the local food. Even though they had plenty of time, they waited until the last minute to book their flights and Airbnb. They started looking for a place in May, which wasn't the best timing. They spent days scrolling through websites, but most places were either too expensive or too far from the city center. Finally, one of their friends found a nice studio apartment near Las Ramblas, a busy tourist area full of shops and restaurants. The studio was on a quieter side street, a bit run down but safe enough. The apartment was small but cozy, and they had three keys, one for the front door, one for the building's second floor door, and one for their apartment. The place felt secure. The balcony didn't have a handle on the outside, so they figured no one could get in from there. Their routine was simple. They went clubbing every night, got home around 4 a.m., slept until late morning, and spent their days exploring the city. The first three nights were great. They even met up with some guy friends they knew from Barcelona. But the fourth night turned creepy. They got home around 4 a.m. as usual, chatted a bit, and then crashed around 5 a.m. At about 7.30 a.m., one friend who was sleeping in the living room with her suddenly woke up. She felt something touching her ankle and saw a shadowy figure crouching at the end of their bed, reaching under it. At first, she thought it was just sleep paralysis, but her fear made her sit up and yell, What the heck? Her shouting woke her up, and she saw the guy too. He was startled, stood up, stared at them for a moment, and then quietly walked out of the apartment. He passed by their other two girls, who were still sound asleep in the main room. Her friend and she stayed up for a while, whispering about what had just happened, totally freaked out. Eventually, they woke up the others and told them everything. The scariest part? They had left the front door unlocked that night, but there wasn't even a handle on the outside, so how did he get in? He didn't take anything, even though they had their phones, credit cards, and cash lying out in plain sight. They didn't call the police because they thought they'd blame them for not locking the door, and they didn't tell the landlord either. But they knocked on the door of their neighbors, the loud Italian guys they met earlier, to ask if they knew anything, but they never answered. Now, if you love spooky stuff, don't worry. We've got more for you.
check out my previous creepy video, Moments After Cops Witnessed Paranormal Trail Camp Activity, that pops up on your screen to keep the chills going.